Welcome back. So far, we've covered the broad concepts of Dolby Atmos Music, how to set up your room, and settings for your system components. In this video, I'm gonna show you how I create music in Dolby Atmos. We'll go through the basic production workflow of building a mix, organizing a session, using beds and objects, as well as panning automation. We're gonna use a track I've written with Bachelors of Science called If I Could, which features vocals by the incredible Robert Manos. We wrote this track for our album called Within This Moment. It's a liquid vocal track with some nice 808 bassline energy. Let's get into it. Okay, so diving right in, we have this song set up in a Pro Tools session. Wanna make sure that I mention that all the principles discussed here are gonna be applicable in Ableton, Logic, Nuendo, whatever DAW that you're mixing Dolby Atmos music in, this stuff all applies. Same goes for the genre. This is a drum and bass track, but everything I'm gonna show you here could be applied to any kind of record that you might be mixing. So let's go check out the session here. So if we come over to the session here, um, you can see Starting out, we have our drum bus, our sub, and our drop sub. All of those are being sent to the stereo bed. If I pull the drop down menu, you can see all the options here of your bed assignments. But with things like this, I tend to mix them to stereo left and right. That way you maintain your punch and power from your drums and your bass. I have the mix session already set up. We have a couple different groups here. I like to color code so that it's easy to navigate through the system. I have all of my outputs set here. I have a few tracks that are the Dolby Atmos native panner within Pro Tools. I also have several tracks which are the Dolby Atmos music panner. We also have our send assignments here. So as you can see, I'm sending everything to the Atmos reverb send, which is just a touch of reverb to kind of glue the mix together in the Dolby Atmos environment. Very low gain on the return, as you can see. but it's a really powerful tool, so I like to apply that. We also have, on some of the tracks, only these three, we have the LFE send. That's gonna basically send information from the kick drum and the sub bass to our LFE channel. And if I scroll over here, you can see the LFE return. That LFE return has an EQ on it, which is essentially a low pass filter and a slight high pass filter to get rid of some of those super low frequencies that might end up just creating some mud in your mix. Another thing I wanna show you in the way this is set up is as you can see here, I have a VCA channel. It's the one that's soloed here. And what that is, is basically a controller for the entire Atmos mix. What I do is I select all the tracks in the Atmos mix, and then I come over here and I sign a group for them. And that group is called mix or VCA1 and I assign that to the VCA. And that way I can adjust the volume of the entire mix with one fader. The other really powerful thing about having a VCA that controls your entire Atmos mix is that you can use that to easily AB with a stereo master. So here right next to it I have a stereo master of the song which I can then use to AB with the Atmos mix. Let me demonstrate that for you. So here we are, right before the first drop. And here's the stereo version. And I can switch to the Atmos. And so on, back and forth. And make adjustments on my Atmos mix as I go. Again, this is really handy if you're making an Atmos mix of a song which already has a stereo mix that exists, right? Because maybe you wanna reference that so you can maintain the artistic intent of the original song. However, if you're doing an Atmos mix from scratch, maybe someday you'll make a stereo mix and you'll wanna reference the Atmos mix for the stereo mix. It's just a tool that is really handy that I like to use. All right, so now that we've discussed some of the track layout, let's get into the panners. This is where the creative process gets really interesting um, because you can have full control over all these sounds that you've created and crafted and recorded. I'm gonna go ahead and take this piano track here and I'll solo it for you. 
So while pianos are things I might normally keep stationary, for this demonstration, why don't we pan this around a bit? So if I go ahead and enable the automation mode into touch and hit play, I can then grab the object in the panner and pan this around however I wish. And it's gonna record this automation into the swim lane. I can adjust the height, which would take the sound from the sides and elevate it into the overheads, like this. I could adjust the size and make the sound bigger and occupy more space within the environment. And as you can see, when I let go of one of these automation moves, it's gonna go back to its original state. That's because I'm in touch mode. If you were in latch mode, it would remain where you let it go. So now, if I were to go ahead and play that back, you'll hear all those automation moves that I just recorded. And you can see the automation moves here in the swim lanes. So now if I play the rest of the track, you can see this automation is gonna flow with the track. And that to me is one of the most magical things about Dolby Atmos because you can have an instrument that has so much emotion and expression in it. And when you put a panner on there, and now you're moving that instrument around in certain gestures that reflect its character, you can enhance it, which is gonna enhance your song in a whole new way. As you can see in the renderer window, I've got a lot of objects moving around pretty consistently throughout the track. Some of the other tracks I mix, I won't have objects moving at all. It really depends on the flavor and the character of the song. Sometimes I might just want to have great separation, have certain instruments placed in the rear, maybe overhead, maybe on the sides, or maybe in the front. Just depends on what the instrument calls for and what the song calls for. So there is no right or wrong way to mix an Atmos. The only thing you should keep in mind is doing what you think is best for the song. Go to our Dolby Atmos music creation site at dolby.com slash music slash create you can download a free trial of the Dolby Atmos production suite here. This site also has additional resources like our quick start guide with info on the best practices, a directory of music studios enabled for Dolby Atmos mixing, video content featuring pros discussing their experiences with Dolby Atmos and much more.